I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, passing may be at a premium, at least for one side. The Seahawks are number one in pass defense, and they're going up against the Falcons offense that knows they'll be challenged. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside CenturyLink Field here in Seattle. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Seattle Seahawks. And they're going to have really good starting field position here as that's taken up close to the 40. Time with Devontae Freeman. And he's going to get this down to the 35 yard line. Give him 27 yards that time. And that leads to an Atlanta first down. Freeman again, a first down carry. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32 yard line. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. On second down, Freeman. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. After watching that play and result, I go back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator, Brandon, before the game and said, how are you going to move the ball running it against the number one defense? He gave us no indication, didn't tip his hand at all, so we have to see how this unfolds as this game moves along. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. On third down, Ryan. Jordan Reed has it. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. And now a first down following that long game. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. And that's incomplete. Jordan Reed was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. The Seahawks, here's their defensive lineup. When you say the name Richard Sherman, you get a wide variety of reactions. All I know is that when I watch him play, 
very few false steps, an excellent understanding of what offenses are trying to do. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. On second down, Ryan. And his throw is incomplete. Trying to get that in the hands of Devontae Freeman that time. And now it's third down. Can this defense get the stop on the opening drive? Here's third and goal. about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they come up. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. Devontae Freeman, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Falcons have taken the early lead. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. And after the touchdown, here's Bryant now to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. time with Lacey. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Calais Campbell on the stop. And this offense often hinges on one of the best tight ends in the league, and that's Jimmy Graham. I think he made up for lost time when he got to the NFL because in college he was mainly a basketball player, a defender who couldn't score. Now he's flipped it around in the NFL. Every time he touches the ball, he's a threat to score. On second down, here's Wilson. It's caught, lock it. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. The starting defense for the Falcons. Don Terry Poe emerged on the scene fast as a young player and continues to make big plays at defensive tackle. Wilson now to throw on third down. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Let's take it inside his own 40. That'll go as a punt of 32 yards. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> if you love pressure, we'll, I see, love we'll it. see if they dial it up this drive. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. One receiver left, two to the right. Here's Ryan to throw. 
And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And oh, this is Beckham remaining down on the ground. And apparently in some pain. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. They run. Devontae Freeman. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. He loses five full yards to bring up fourth. So on fourth down, the Falcons will call on Matt Bosher to punt it away. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. From the gun, it's Wilson. Complete. Richardson has it. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make it second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and six to start things out. On second down. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And a nice little pass and catch there on the corner route. Set up very well by the receiver with a head and shoulder fake inside before he comes back downhill to his quarterback. They come out here in the eye. Now a first down carry, it's Lacey. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 18 on that one. And it's good enough for a Seattle first. They stay on the ground on first down with Lacey. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. They'll get 16 yards there, and that'll be good for a Seattle first down. On first and 10, it's Wilson. It's complete to lock it. Second touchdown on the season. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This will be a touchback. Last year would have come out to the 20. This year they'll move it out to the 25-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, 
you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. He's going to loft one deep left side here. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. Second and ten, it's Ryan again. Oh, the rookie nearly had the pick. Probably should have had it. Third down now. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. One receiver left, two to the right. On third down, Ryan. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that's caught inside the 30. And he finally goes down at the 23-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. And the offense lining up first and 10. Ryan leaves with Freeman on the draw. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. So there you go, holding by the offense, and that'll push him back. Changes everything now as you try and figure out what your playbook has for you. Longer yardage situations, tougher to execute and pick up first downs. So 20 yards to go here on first down. After the penalty, here's Freeman. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five yards there, and it'll bring up second down. I know it's a word that we tend to overuse, but Devontae Freeman can be awfully explosive with the ball in his hands. He showed at the beginning of last year. He had ten touchdowns the first couple months. The Falcons themselves were red hot, then sort of went down the tubes a little bit toward the end. Yeah, the team's record and its production declined the same way, but I really like his overall game. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. But he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. Back to Century Link Field after this. So third and 15 and an extra defensive back in the game now. Flooding the passing lanes. Third and long. It's Ryan. They'll set up the screen for Freeman. And he is going to lose yardage here. And a loss of three to bring up four. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. And that'll be off the crossbar and out. It's short. He couldn't get it there. It's no good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. 
Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was a crossbar that said otherwise. And that'll deny him a shot at three. On first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Good throw, good catch. But I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. Second down, Wilson. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And good to see Jimmy back out there moving okay after the ruptured patella in week 12 last year. You've dealt with that injury, haven't you? I have, and uh, let me tell you, you know that expression, I feel feel your pain? I felt Jimmy's when it, when it happened. Now, mine didn't happen quite the same way his did. His happened in the line of duty. He was playing in a game. For me, I was just coaching. <laughs> and went up to try and catch a pass. I think for me, it was just mainly age. For him, he was actually playing. But good to see him back out there healthy. So a little grabbing there, but this time it goes against the offense for holding. And following that penalty, the offense really backed up now on third down. On third down, Wilson. And the third down pass falls incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin. And that brings up fourth down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. This is taken at about the 14. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. there. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to run. And that's caught inside the 35. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report, here's Larry Ridley. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead and we resume action here in quarter number three. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. They start the second half with Lacey. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set. To throw is Wilson. And Graham's got it over the middle. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. 
I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A little one two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Second down, here's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Wilson. Rush coming and he's taken down. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Fighting throw. Sheds a second man. He's building up some momentum, isn't he? So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Falcon football as they take possession. Start with a carry by Devontae Freeman. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Earl Thomas in on the stop. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. So what will they do? On the ground, through the air, let's see. Second and nine. one up to the 26. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves them needing about seven here on third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Seven yards remain now on third down. the bootleg and this is going to be caught no they say it's incomplete a third down he tried to stay in bounds did all he could he caught it but was led a little bit too far yeah and that's always difficult isn't it because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out trying to catch the football the top half worked it was the bottom half that was in question And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't turn it over. Right? You're giving, it, giving your defense a chance, 
because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover and wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Jimmy Graham, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned an ending in a house call. But he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. This will be taken short. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before and realize it hasn't <laughs> worked so something well. else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. A big play there, Ryan to Jones, 56 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator is looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll look to run with Freeman. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. On third and goal, Ryan. That's caught at the two. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Jesse James, his first touchdown on the year. And the Falcons are an extra point away from having the lead. Bryant now to tack on the extra point. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. For the touchdown, here's Bryant now to kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Here's Wilson. And he can't quite bring it in. Might have heard footsteps there across the middle. Second down. On any pass that's in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. And Graham's got it. Complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up a third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Third down and three. Hey, check, check. 
They come out here in the eye. On third down, here's Lacey. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefit to that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. And that led to a really nice gain. On first and ten, it's Wilson. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on at its second down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Second and ten now, Wilson. And he's got his tight end. This is Luke Wilson. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. One back is Lacey. Wilson now to throw on third down. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Time running out here on the play clock. Here we go, it's Wilson on fourth down. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he's going to get to the 31 and up for the first down. Give him 10 yards on the pickup. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the offense has it first and 10. Graham slotted out to the left. They'll run it with Lacey. Down to about the 22 here. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Again, it's Lacey. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. He's back to throw. And he finds Jimmy Graham. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Now a handoff. Here's Lacey. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. 
So if I'm an offensive coordinator, there's one thing that I know for sure. This is one of the top five teams in the NFL against the run. So when I look at my playlist, I'm probably thinking about throwing it. to the flat for Lacey. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Give him eight on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. there that would have been ball game if he had clinched it and caught it instead it gives him one more chance here on fourth down so a big one coming now for Will Lutz this to take the lead here in the final minute and this is off the left upright and it carries in not the most convincing kick you'll see, but he got it to go. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. They'll look to throw. And this would complete to Andre Roberts. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That's caught inside the 20. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Ryan to throw. Getting it out left side to Sanu. Give him nine there on the first down completion. It didn't check off every box. But the most important one, got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So it's all up to the other Matty Ice. Matt Bryant now. Two seconds on the clock. This for the win. And it's good. He got it. He missed his lone attempt earlier, but he connects when it matters most. And the Falcons are going to win the game. 
Charles, this is not an easy place to win. They are known for having such a great crowd. But how about that? They came in here, they were determined from the opening kick, and they got it done. And they've done such a great job at putting an excellent team on the field. But the architects that built this stadium to keep the noise in, and that crowd responds in a big way. But you're exactly right. Hard to believe that people can still come in here and win the game. So for the Falcons, their good start continues as they get their record up to 4-2. and two. And they will head home next week to take on the San Diego Chargers. Meanwhile, for the Seahawks, it'll be their first loss of the season. And they'll try to rebound next week as they head to Glendale to take on the Cardinals. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Seattle, so long, everybody. You know the power of the song